In an ideal world, journalism serves an important purpose. The concept of investigative reporting or information dispersal is not something to take lightly. It has exceptional value if done properly, and the title for this video is very deliberate. I almost called it the cesspool of modern journalism, but in doing so I would have opened the door for the most basic counter-argument imaginable. It's not all journalism, only some. I might honestly still have done it had I not remembered that one of my primary complaints with modern social media as of late is when people overgeneralize. For instance, all men are trash, posted by some angry moron on Twitter. I even recently commented on that type of behavior, criticizing it, so in the interest of being as consistent as possible, I have specified the title to a more deliberate format. Modern journalism is a quagmire of corrupt behavior, but it's not all journalism, and it's not all reporters. Instead, I will focus on quid pro quo journalism, which is unfortunately rampant behavior that is undeniably corrupt. One of the most recent examples is Netflix. Netflix, the household name behind the initial push of video streaming, also now produces its own TV shows and movies. Some of them are okay, most of them are woke trash, but that's a totally separate topic, that's not for today. However, among the weeds are some truly exceptional releases. One such release is The Irishman, a story of mobsters and crime featuring Robert De Niro and directed by Martin Scorsese. Great movie, undeniably, really a great movie I can wholeheartedly recommend to pretty much anyone, but that's not the point. The point is that in their now prominent entertainment production endeavors, industry awards are becoming a point of focus. The Critics' Choice Awards are no small thing in Hollywood, and with the goal of securing as many nominations as possible, Netflix took some interesting steps. In advance of the nomination process, Netflix flew some 400 or more journalists and critics out to Los Angeles and New York City for expensive paid events, meet and greets with directors and actors from their major film releases, and other luxurious appointments that cost a lot of money and would easily be considered desirable to anyone who is a fan of the modern Hollywood industry. Not long after, they received nearly double the number of award nominations when compared to any other competitor at the Critics' Choice Awards. The subtext here is plain to see. Netflix gives out a fancy trip, and the journalists or other critics give Netflix exactly what they want. This is a quid pro quo, but more than that, it is an irreconcilable conflict of interest. I myself have been offered trips like this, not so much in the film industry, but rather in the video game space. It's not constant, but the offers do come in. Fly out here for a trip to meet the devs, fly out there for a launch party, or whatever it is, and I have denied all but two of them, with a very specific criteria. The thing I look for is actual development input. The two trips I ultimately accepted had some sort of consulting component. The first was for the original division to actively give feedback on mechanical balancing to improve the game, and the second was from Behavior Interactive, the developer behind Death Garden, for a similar purpose. Now, this isn't to pat myself on the back or signal my virtue. This is to communicate that I am afraid. I would love to go to these places, fly across the world to private parties with everything arranged for me, free of charge. But I am afraid, because as soon as that happens, there is a looming expectation. The simple, undeniable truth is that these trips come with an expected return. For my trip to Massive Entertainment, for example, when working on The Division, the expected return was balancing feedback. They expected me, along with about 13 other people, to contribute advice on gameplay mechanics that would improve the game, thereby increasing player base retention, morale, and size. This was an expectation I could proudly acknowledge and conform to, hence my immediate agreement. And to go even further, in the lead-up to that particular event, I had actively campaigned to be chosen. The journalists and critics flown out by Netflix had an expectation of their own, but that expectation had nothing to do with development feedback, it had to do with speculative accolades. These types of trips, whether it be the launch party for a new video game, a meet and greet with filmmakers, or even some sort of nebulous press event, which is kind of a catch-all phrase they use for these types of things, they have an expectation that once the company has done something for you, then you must do something for the company. It's possible to go against this, but to do so all but guarantees the opportunity will not be given again. I could accept a trip from some gaming launch party thing, drink the free drinks, socialize, see whatever city I'm in, stay a few extra days, and then come home, only to then refuse coverage or even cover the game in a negative light, but that defiant act would ensure I never get asked again. And not only that, it would probably cut down on the number of other ventures that reach out to me. It's a small world, people talk. So what do I do? What do these other journalists or critics do? Well, we face a choice. Accept the reward and give something back, or lose out on the reward and close that door. Because rest assured, there are hundreds of other YouTubers, reporters, journalists, critics, whatever it may be, who are fully willing to play ball. 
Think about it this way. The vast majority of quoted testimony regarding the Netflix trips came from anonymous sources who did not wish to be identified as someone who had accepted the offer. This should raise all of the red flags. A critic accepted a trip from a major company regarding a film they are about to evaluate for important industry awards nominations. Then, when talking about that trip, they seek anonymity because they know they should not have done it. They know it was not ethical, and they know, considering the disproportionate number of nominations given afterwards, nominations they themselves probably contributed to, they know it is a breach of moral integrity, and yet they still do it. This is the latest example of quid pro quo journalism, and the sad truth is that it's becoming the new normal. The largest example I have ever seen is games journalism as a whole. Sure, there are a few exceptions, but not many, and certainly not from the industry giants. Sites like IGN, Kotaku, Polygon, The Verge, they all have direct relationships with gaming publishers, and those relationships are a two-way street. In one direction, special trips, advanced review copies, exclusive interviews, and other material flows outward, and in the opposite direction, positively skewed coverage built upon the fear of losing these privileges is given back. Now, this is where things get a bit more complicated, because in most other sectors of journalism, there is a natural check and balance. Take politics, for example. Some outlets report with a liberal spin, others with a conservative one. Sure, there are certain viewers who hope one or the other will fail entirely, but there is a widespread of possible options, and many of those options cater to different demographics. Generally speaking, viewers gravitate towards whatever outlet they most enjoy, because they are able to get whatever information it may be, typically at least, from an acceptable range of options. Now compare that to gaming. There are some options, yes, but the lineage of information on a AAA level especially can be traced back very quickly to one of only a few different publishers, and those publishers award information to one or two of only a few media giants in the space. This is exacerbated because gaming media is currently at or near rock bottom from a public perception standpoint. In the politics example, sure the opposite side of the aisle sort of cheers for your demise, they don't really like you, but they are usually more preoccupied listening to the sources they actually do like. In gaming, that's not the case. The actual viewer base for these major sites, at least in a partial sense, and not a small partial sense at that, actively hate them. Their own audience is frequently hoping they will fail and burn, which forces them down the road of quid pro quo catering even further. If mainstream media sites in the gaming space weren't so widely despised, they could afford to reject some of the exclusive content, but instead they are engaging in a quid pro quo with publishers while reporting exclusive content to a captive audience that has no other options for edge of the knife updates. Imagine if this was how political journalism worked, and sadly, it's actually moving in that direction right now. The Trump administration has made recent shifts where it holds press conferences that bar certain outlets and different media firms, and for the sake of space or timing, to some degree that is understandable, maybe, but not the way they have chosen to do it. Obviously, you can't fit a rep from every single news publication in the entire country into one single briefing room at the same time. That's pretty obvious here. But the White House has decided to deliberately bar certain outlets from particular sessions. This is a step down the road of quid pro quo journalism. Access to information that competitors are not given, or worse yet, in terms of gaming, access to information no one else is given, creates the same expectation. You get this, we get something back. There is a reason gaming reviews have become a battleground. A game like Artifact, from Valve, for example, this is just a really obvious example, there are dozens, where the critic scores are glowingly positive, but user scores evaluate the game for what it is, a lazy cash grab, and the player base metrics back this up. From 60,000 peak players on day one or two or whatever at launch, to just over 100, not 100,000, 100 flat. It's a dead game. And yet, IGN gave it an 85, with gushingly positive remarks. To go further, they have lines like, What qualifies as expensive is subjective to each person, but Artifact is fairly affordable compared to other trading card games. The whole thing reads like a sales pitch. Buy this. Love it. It's great. Everyone else absolutely hates it, and the player base was already evaporating even days after launch, but buy, 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 they told us to love this game and to sell it well. How about Gears 5? I was going to do a whole separate video on this topic, and I still might if more instances appear or I get more information somehow, but Gears 5 on the Microsoft Store saw a massive reversal of reviews. They didn't just delete the negative ones like Metacritic did, with 70% of the negative Death Stranding reviews just deleted them and left the clearly botted positive reviews untouched. Gears 5 on the Microsoft Store saw massive increases to the positive reviews while purging the negative ones and pretty much doubling the score 
poor as a result. Not only that, the proportion of review feedback became pretty much identical all across the globe, and there is almost never an instance where this type of review influx happens, even with huge new content drops, let alone the majority of past reviews not just disappearing, but changing to 5 stars. We are expected to believe that about 1300 people in every major market simultaneously came in and just rated this game 5 stars out of the blue, all at once, weeks after release? What? I'm totally off topic right now, I get that, I am, but once you go down the rabbit hole of false reporting and deceitful behavior in gaming, and particularly gaming media, the floodgates just won't close. The main takeaway, using Netflix as a jumping off point, is that quid pro quo journalism inevitably creates a lower standard, a much lower standard. Worse yet, when the majority of major outlets are engaged in rampant similar behavior, it creates the very situation we are in now. The media audience hates the very thing they are watching because they have to watch it because exclusive information is awarded and substandard coverage is then given to continue that partnership. People say I'm too negative or pessimistic, but with media being what it is, we should all understand that when coverage is released, movie reviews, game reviews, award ceremonies, whatever it is, whatever it may be, there is most likely some form of quid pro quo. Incentives are given, opinions change to keep those incentives flowing, and the unmitigated truth gets buried because the unmitigated truth doesn't always earn the most money or get the most perks. That's it for today. If you want support, there are links down below, merch, Patreon, social media, that kind of typical stuff, but I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching, and have a nice night.